This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to Essentially Jacob, the perfume shrine of the fashion bunker. The end of the year is here. A little rhyme. And the top 10 perfumes for this year, or my top 10 perfumes for this year, list is ready. So I'm going to share it with you today. First and foremost, subscribe to my channel uh, here on Essentially Jacob. If you haven't already, and thumb up this video if you're liking it thus far, and if you like my content in general. Thank you, everybody who has already subscribed. Um, I live stream every Saturday on my main Super Jacob channel. That's where I also pre-record these videos. Uh, join me every Saturday on my main channel where we get to talk together in the chats. So I have my wonderful live co-chatters in the chats uh, here with me. You guys can try to guess which perfumes are coming in this list. And for those of you who are watching after the live stream is done, uh, you can just fast forward if you want to see and get. But otherwise, you could let me know your top 10 in the comment section down below. I'm really curious to hear also the psychology behind it. Because for me, this list is compiled of perfumes that have meant something to me this year. The ones that I have maybe discovered for the first time that have moved me in the best of ways this year, or maybe even in the worst of ways. Just the perfumes that have had the biggest heft and weight in my life this year. Mind you, I'm a person that, especially during lockdown, but also not during lockdown, I'm a person that uses perfumes mostly at home for my own pleasure. I go through, you know, 12 to 20 different smells a day uh, while I'm at home. You know, put a little perfume here, smell it just to feel it, then, you know, one hour later, a little perfume there. I love to keep... To me, smelling perfumes throughout the day is almost like eating, you know, like snacks and crackers. Like, I, I, I live through perfumes. So, compiling a list of the 10 that have been the most present in my life this year and that have meant the most to me this year means to select those 10 perfumes that I feel I have been drawn to the most, that I have kind of throughout that day of me... Pfft, this, this uh, vest is uh, losing its fur. And I'm inhaling it all the time. So um, the perfumes that I have grabbed to the most throughout the day, if I'm going through 20 different smells, the ones that I kind of felt have been always reaching out to. So what would that be? Now, first and foremost, obviously, let's get the biggest one out of the way because you best believe it's in it. Chanel number no. 5, the Pure Perfume. I... I'm enjoying the spray, the 7.5 mil spray of the Pure Perfume. Um, why is this one here? For several reasons, but most importantly, because it is Chanel Number no. Five's hundredth birthday uh, or hundredth birth year. 2021 has been so. This perfume has experienced so many special events and launches and limited editions this year. It's just been constantly um, a form of, uh, or a topic of conversation. And Chanel number no. five is definitely, definitely in my top 10 for 2021 because I've always loved this perfume. And all, I mean, I just, I, I think this, it's in its pure perfume form, the extrait is my favorite. I also love Dior Toilette and Dior Parfum, but, and I also like Lo. I'm not a fan of Eau Premier, but it's the Pure Perfume, number one, Eau de Toilette, number two. Of course, Eau de Cologne is discontinued, otherwise Eau de Cologne would be up there as well. But Extrait, first pole position, and then Eau de Toilette right under that. So, it just means so much to me. It has meant so much to me throughout my whole life, and this year was just so special because I love this perfume so much, and to be able to celebrate its 100th birthday made it even more special to me. I've hunted down vintage bottles of it this year. I've gone through extra reviews of this perfume this year, and I'm even dedicating a whole a portion of my Essentially Jacob channel uh, as the year ends to posting videos dedicated to Chanel Number no. 5 that I have originally um, first published on my main YouTube channel in the past years. 
uh, before I initiated the Essentially Jacob channel. So I'm giving this whole homage and retrospective to my Chanel Number no. 5 reviews just to celebrate this perfume because I really, really do love it that much. So obviously, no brainer, Chanel Number no. 5. Second one also has been so present for me this year and it's been like a pendant to chanel number no. five and uh it's kind of like they call it the smaller sister came out a year after chanel number no. five um it is chanel number no. 22. now i have here a um eau de toilette a bottle that has become very orange the vanilla in here has matured oh the depth of, <laughs> of number 22 when it ages well it's like a good brandy this thing is amazing um it it is in many ways similar to number five but also in many other ways it is the opposite of chanel number five and it is kind of the unfortunate smaller sister of number five because it doesn't have um the notoriety that number five has it's also been segregated to the les exclusives collection in in the states it used to have a regular release in the 80s 90s early 2000s and then they took it off the market as they were planning to launch the les exclusives range that's when this one lost its distribution in the states which is a pity because they had a whole body bath and body range of this one could you imagine having the body powder still of number 22 to die for anyway um Number 22 has, interestingly enough, been a companion of mine late in the nights or early in the morning. And uh, I've noticed that I've been using this one also throughout the entire year. I, I'm quite surprised that this has been the case because usually, I don't want to say this is more, more for spring for me, but definitely not a perfume that I usually would use all year round. But I did this year. So there you have it. Number 22 has been in my top 10 perfumes uh, for 2021. And let's not forget, this one is probably going to be in my top 10 also next year because next year is the 100th birthday of number 22. Number 22 was released in 1922. So in 2022, 19, uh, so in 2022, number 22 will celebrate 100 birthdays as well. So after a whole year of celebrating number five, we are shifting into 2022 where we will be celebrating the entire year number 22, which is another one of my staples from the Chanel collection. I just love it that much in all its concentrations. I have the Eau de Toilette here, but I also have the Eau de Parfum and I also have the Pure Perfume, the Extrait. I love all three for different reasons. I wouldn't be able to pick which one of the three I love the most. Number three uh, is a... Um, uh, let's go... Wait, this one. The, the perfume, one of the perfumes that I got for my birthday uh, this year, uh, the <laughs> the Dracula Vampire perfume, Tuberose Criminelle by Serge Luton. Um, oof, the, the, the salicylic <laughs> indoles in here are just beyond. This thing is a camphorous bomb. It is a conceptual fragrance really beautiful on paper on skin it has its moments it has its ups and downs it, it is a difficult one uh but that's why i love it so much so this was a purchase that i made this year and it was a hell of an investment because this thing is really very expensive too expensive i think it should not cost that much but if you see it as a conceptual art piece then I guess, yes, this is not the type of perfume that I jump on every day and I crave every day. But guess what? Almost every day, I take the lid off and I smell it, at least out of the out of the lid. I crave it from a distance. I don't always crave it on my skin. But because something about it keeps calling me back, just like a vampire would lure you in and constantly keeps luring you in, so does this one. And since my birthday june so mid-year and up until now it's been a very very significant constant in my life even though it's been calling me from the shadows huh see what i did there what we do in the shadows great show by the way so that would be my number three right now number four is another tuberose 
and that would be carnal flower. Now, carnal flower has been, believe it or not, uh, in this very difficult, psychologically tense and stressful year, again, a lockdown, we're not getting out of all that problem anytime soon. So this is the most natural smelling perfume I think I own. This has been my anchor to nature and to raw realness. So this has been such a wonderful, wonderful, sophisticated companion in my life. It, it, in those days when I felt super depressed and when I felt like, oh my gosh, I'm going to die in, in these, in this, in these bunker walls and I'm never going to travel again. And it's never going to, we're never going to go back to being free again. And nah, 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 nah. this thing got me through those moments because it smells of, of a hyper nature of hyper freedom of hyper liberation. And it really made me feel that way, even though I was still in lockdown. So I have a very, very strong emotional connection to this one. It is a very, very uh, important perfume in my life. And it is so potent. The concentration that I have here with my batch code, it's more than a pure perfume. It's like a, a concentration of a concentration, literally one spray and it lasts two days on my skin. That, that, that's why it seems like I haven't used it up at all, but it's because it's one spritz and, and, and it overwhelms all your senses. So definitely in my top 10 this year, it's been a lifesaver. It really has, or, or it's been a sanity save, uh, saver, savior. That was my number four. Number five, Again, Chanel, obviously, because, you know, Chanel is the love of my life. I am wearing Chanel today. I'm wearing a Chanel vest, Chanel bracelet, uh, you know. Anyway, Gardenia, Eau de Parfum. Eau de Parfum. Important to note that. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so this one was so important to me this year, and I've been using it all year long uh, because this has become my staple perfume for my live streams exclusive pre-shows for tier two members and patrons on my main channel because that's where I have all the membership and the subscriptions going on as of now uh, as of now when I'm filming this video so I always start the pre-shows with this perfume on it's it's my way of giving me a boost making me feel good giving me the right energy making me feel special it makes me feel special. It makes me feel like cozy, but not like warm cozy. It's not a perfume that gives you warmth. It, it, it makes you feel a green cozy, which is very rare because green doesn't really feel cozy. Green scents don't give off a cozy vibe. This one has a particular type of green note in it. that makes you smile it, it's just it's just so majestic such a beautiful 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 fragrance and it's just perfection for the green room because my pre-shows happen in a green room where the walls are green and you know it's like back it's like being backstage with me so this is my backstage scent i always have my bathrobe on i'm getting ready for the main show and i spend time with my um tier two members and, and patrons and we talk about you know real talk and that's where this one is worn and I smell it all around me. So it envelops me, it gives me strength and it sets the tone for then the next following 10 to 11 hours while I live stream the main shows. So this one has been a very powerful companion on a weekly basis because I live stream every Saturday. So this one is a musk, it's a staple of every Saturday. So yes, this one has to be in my top 10 for 2021, Gardenia masterpiece masterpiece of a perfume even in today's formulation so that was number five next one is a uh another one that has been with me as a discovery this year now i've had this one for many many years but this is the first year that i got it in the eau de parfum form well i got it last december but 
I started really, really using it this year. Au Noir from the Collection Privée or Maison Dior Collection, now re-renamed re, re Collection Privée, Eau de Parfum Form. Of course, oh, oh my gosh, this thing is amazing. And this is the first time ever that I started using, this is the first year ever that I started using Au Noir in summer. Spring, summer, autumn, winter, of course, goes without saying this is a, a warm, wintry fragrance, but I've always had Eau de Cologne, but since I've kind of went for the, you know, I have the first version of Eau Noir from the early 2000s, which is Eau de Cologne, which has a different type of aggressive intensity to it than, than Eau de Parfum. Eau de Parfum is more wearable, really. And so since I started using the Eau de Parfum, I just fell in love with it all over again and I spent all summer long wearing it. I would have never thought in a million years that I would wear Eau Noir in the heat of summer. And yet, I spent most of the summer wearing Eau Noir. I mean, this is a 250 ml bottle. This is the amount I used up this year because I got this in December. So now, you know, it, in one year I used up uh, over a hundred milliliter, which to me is a lot because I have so many perfumes and I use so many perfumes. So to use up so much of just one perfume in particular, that it means a lot. It shows you just how much I have devoured this fragrance and loved it so much. So this has been in the Eau de Parfum concentration, such a discovery for me this year that for the first time ever, enjoying Eau Noir in summer was, it was mind blowing to me. Wonderful, wonderful. Plus, you know what? All those times when you're feeling lonely and depressed and uh, you smell this and it gives you maple syrup, <laughs> McGriddle. Oh my gosh, my stomach is grumbling just thinking about it. Oh, what I would give right now for a country McGriddle at McDonald's breakfast. Mm, maple syrup and that patty and that... Mm. It gives you food vibes. Yes, it has immortel in it, so it does give you a little bit of curry. On my skin, it doesn't turn into curry, but it goes into the lavender, licorice, burned woods, incense. It's just, oh, my mouth is watering. Literally makes your mouth water. And that burnt, burnt, dark, woodsy, baroque touch at the bitter dry down of this perfume just makes you soar to other worlds. And it just makes you, again escape these four walls and it makes you escape this sad reality you're living in of, of a lockdown. Wonderful perfume gave me so much hope. So yes, this is, this is, this is, this is the love of my life. It, it had to be in my top 10 of, of 2021. 20, uh, now, number seven, respectfully paying homage to Shalimar. Um, the Pure Perfume. I just purchased the Pure Perfume a short while ago, but boy, oh boy, this little creature here, this little teeny tiny creature. Oh. Yeah, I have to actually, you know what? I love it so much, I have to put it on right now. Okay, so hold on. Not on that hand, because I have a, costume jewelry there so it has to all go on this hand because you know costume jewelry does not like alcohol or water for that matter so uh, the second I did the unboxing of Shalimar and you could check that out on my Essentially Jacob channel right here on this channel the second I put it on my skin the first my, my first reaction to it was delicate and you know what? We need more of this in our lives right now. That soft, because Shalimar, Shalimar has an aggressive, if you, if you wear the Eau de Parfum, even the Eau de Toilette, there's an aggressive metallic note in there. You know, something a little chemical, you know, well, they are synthetic perfumes after all, but that, that I'm used to, and I do love, but the pure perfume, the perf, the pure perfume, doesn't have that. The pure perfume immediately goes into the softest, most delicate, delicate, gentle vanillas. 
the Gerlinade vanilla. And it's like in a fluffy, delicate cloth. It is wonderful. Another feel-good perfume. Another one of those perfumes that this year, even though it came in relatively late in this concentration to my collection, it has veered its way up to the top, um, to the top 10. And I crave it. I just crave it so, so much. It makes me feel fluffy, soft, and most importantly, accepting of myself. Because, you know, the lockdown is what it is. Uh, we've all gone through it. Most of us, well, I can speak for myself, right? I, I've, I've had my moments of, you know, over overeating, not really moving as much, gaining weight. Strangely enough, and in a good way, this one makes me feel good about myself. I wear this and I feel like, well, that's okay, Jacob. I mean, as long as you're healthy, we can deal with the weight later, but just like, stay healthy, <laughs> stay healthy. You're doing good. Love yourself, cuddle yourself, embrace yourself. That's what this is. This perfume literally keeps telling you to love yourself. It, so it, it has a very, very special place in my heart because it is a, a perfume of acceptance and love. Shalimar. I mean, of course, the whole concept of Shalimar in my review, I talk about it, right? What it was made after, to, you know, the, the gardens of the Taj Mahal and the love story. So it is about love. The perfume's inception was dedicated to love. And in fact, the smell of it also makes you love yourself. Not in an egotistical way, but it makes you just, it makes you accept yourself, embrace yourself. It's really beautiful. Very, very optimistic, positive, beautiful message olfactory message in a perfume. So definitely top 10 for 2021. And God knows in this year, we need more love than ever. Uh, number seven, uh, no, number eight. Yeah, number eight. Wait, is it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? Right. Number eight is a newly released perfume. So number eight falls in the category of the perfume that I have discovered this year in terms of my favorite launch of the year. This is just my personal preference, you guys, to each their own. But my personal discovery and love of a perfume that has been released in 2021, so my favorite release of 2021 because it falls under my top 10 of this year, is Nettare di Sole, another Guerlain fragrance. Nettare di Sole from Aqua Allegoria or Aqua Allegoria, depending on which uh, language from which country pronunciation you want to choose. Oh. Definitely more summery than wintry, but however, this is such a sophisticated fragrance because it it's like an ABBA song. <laughs> it begins in one place and it takes you on a journey. To, all, to a completely different place. This one goes through so many changes and shifts and um, twists and turns. It is so masterfully blended and beautiful. And it begins with this mineral smell, which is kind of very popular for 2021. We've also seen it in Dior's Eden Rock. Uh, there, it doesn't, doesn't really work very well. But then again, Guerlain, yeah, Guerlain, how did I just pronounce it? Guerlain, <laughs> Guerlain knows how to do their perfumes better than Dior does, right? Oh, speaking of Dior, let me just go back to Anouar. Another one of the reasons why I'm so happy to include this one in my top 10 is because Francis Kurjan has been uh, nominated or uh, has been appointed the director or head of perfumes of Christian Dior because Demachi retired, finally. And the, um, and uh, Francis Kurjan is the nose behind Anouar. In the early 2000s, he actually created Anouar. So I'm so happy that the Dior fragrance in my list, in my top 10 list, is also his perfume, the perfume that he made for Dior. And now Francis is coming to Dior and I'm looking forward to what he can do because if he did this, there's no stopping him. If they let him do what he wants to do, obviously, then he can make real magic at Dior. So back to my top 10 for the uh, year of 2021. Um, so that salty mineral note shifts with time and goes into musks and ambery notes and a bit of vanilla, and then it goes into that honey. And when it hits that honey, 
it becomes warm all of a sudden. There's none of it in the beginning, but there's all of it in the end. This thing is really a masterpiece. This is the best perfume of the year, in my humble opinion. Now, obviously, who knows how many thousands of perfumes have been released this year. Obviously, I have not been able to smell every perfume released this year, so I'm not going to be there telling you. I know all of the perfumes, so this is the best one. No, this is just me. On my olfactive journey, I've come across this one as a new release for 2021, and it has taken my breath away. It has stolen my heart. It's just that beautiful. Just that beautiful. Oh, loving it. Okay, number nine um, is niche. And there's a warmth in this one that is just so... It feels like home. It feels like home. And that is Fleur Burlesque um, by Wilhelm Parfumery. Pierre Dinan designed the bottle. The same dude that designed the opium parfum bottle as well as the Obsession Calvin Klein bottle. This one is gorgeous. Gorgeous. A gorgeous jasmine. Nothing to do with indoles. This is a jasmine that Look, it's, it's as yellow as this thing is. It's like sunshine in a bottle. It smells like the niche version of Giorgio by Beverly Hills or Giorgio Beverly Hills. Um, I love my Giorgio Beverly Hills, but this thing is sweeter. It's more musky. It's, it's more sophisticated in many ways. Obviously, we're not talking about the vintage Giorgio that had the real civet in it. We're talking modern day perfumery. This thing, plus longevity is beast. You put this on, you you have it on for the whole day, and then some. And also, it's, oh, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's a smile on my face. This, in the depth of summer, I wore this in the hottest of heats, and it just blossoms on your skin in the heat. It, it becomes this garden of beauty and creamy, velvety, balsamic milky, floral, jasmine delight, it, and gardenia. It's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Just really, really beautiful, beautiful perfume. Happiness, happiness, happiness. And it was my kind of like my drug, you know, to boost my endorphins because this, this little guy here made me feel happy, even on those days when I was not happy. So... It delivered the magic. That's number nine. And we're going to end it with number 10. And number 10 is a very interesting perfume because it um, was released last year. And last year, I was not completely convinced. So it, it, it has its rightful place in this top 10 of 2021 because it is the perfume that made me change completely what I think about it. How? Why? I don't know how it matters. Maybe I matured. Maybe I became ready to understand it. I don't know. It took me months and months and months of sniffing it, using it a little bit, just coming close to it, then distancing myself from it in and out, and in and out, and in and out, and being like, mm, eh, eh. And then, bam, all of a sudden, in the middle of summer, Le Lion de Chanel hit me and hit me hard. So I had this bottle. I bought this bottle last year uh, when it first came out. Uh, I bought the 75 mil and, you know, been testing, you know, it, it, I treat this like a pure perfume. It's so intense, like one spritz and you're good to go. Got myself, you know, the 5001 batch and then as in summer, it kind of just, I don't know what happened. Something clicked. Maybe because, you know, this perfume for me, it came out last year, like November, October, November. So I never had the chance to use it in summer until this summer because it just came out in autumn of last year. So when I started using this in summer or late summer this year, I realized, oh, that's the magic. And it just blew my, blew my head off, <laughs> literally. So I am so in love with this one that... um I had to hunt down backups and I was hunting down the batch code 5001, which is one of the nearest batch codes to the first one's release because 5001 is production date. 
uh, February of 2020. And as we know, first launch was in March of 2020 in uh, the Emirates. And then the whole lockdown situation was super complicated. And then late November to early January launch in Europe and the rest of the world. So having a batch from February, which was prior to the launch in the Emirates, means that this is a very, very, very early batch. I do have some samples that are even in the four digit batch codes, but a full on bottle 5001. Oh, groundbreaking. A lot of people smell this and they smell Shalimar. You got to wear this long enough to understand that it's not Shalimar at all. It, it's not Coromandel at all. It's not number five at all. It's not number 22 at all. It's not 31 Rukambana. It's none of those. And yet it has a memory of all of them. It is, um, you might first, at first sniff, you might say, oh, this smells like an old perfume, dated. Oh, hell no. This thing is groundbreaking. It is so modern. So sophisticated. And what a way to create an ambery accord without going that easy route of the ouds. No oud in here. The labdanum, however, the labdanum in this thing is a masterpiece. The labdanum is so intense in here, such good quality. It makes this perfume smell leathery. There's no leather. The, the leather is the labdanum. It's, it's the intense amount of labdanum in here that gives it a leathery note. The incense tone in here mixed with the labdanum in the dry down, that resinacy labdanum separating slowly or more so imbuing itself with the incense creates such an ancient churchy vibe at a certain point. Then you have that feel of dirty hay so there's, there's the holy in here, but there's the sacrilege in there as well. And there's the pagan in there as well. There's like, it is, but, and yet it stays so elegant. Oh my God. In love. I, oh, I kid you not. I wear this every day. Usually before I go to bed. Who wears Lelion Le Leon de Chanel to go to bed? It's an intense perfume. I do. It, it relaxes me. It makes me go to sleep. It, it just, the beauty of this one and how sweet it can turn on the skin um, if you wear it in the right time of day or night. Because in the mornings, it doesn't turn as sweet on me as it does at night. It's like my chemistry is different at night than it is in the morning. And so it reacts differently to this one. What a masterpiece. Total top 10 for 2021. This has been my list, you guys. These are my top 10 perfumes for 2021. Let me know what yours are in the comment section down below. And let me read some of your chats. Um, let me see what you guys have to say. It looks like Kukzan is working on a Lily of the Valley fragrance for Dior. Oh, really? I didn't know that, Jesus. That's interesting news. Who who told you that? Uh, did did uh, Francis talk about it? I mean, Lily of the Valley has, you know, it's every... Lily of the Valley is even in Chanel number 5. So... There's a lot one can do with Lily of the Valley. It's a kind of a, you say Lily of the Valley and you're like, okay, everybody does Lily of the Valley. It's like, mm. I think even this one has Lily of the Valley in it. Nettere di Sole probably does. But it's what you do with it. Maybe somebody can still make something groundbreaking with it. Page D says, what an exquisite selection, Jacob, so on point. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Rich Mitch, how's it going, sweetie? I'm <laughs> just in time for the perfumes. KDF says, Francis is very talented. Marianne says, oh, my lily of the valley makes me melt. So fam, so femme. Um, a lily of the valley, can, can it can smell poisonous. It's, it's a highly poisonous, uh, actually, flower. Never eat it. But uh, it can smell cold. Very, very cold. Uh, a very interesting Lily of the Valley, if you want to smell the cooling side of it, is uh, Paris Biarritz from the Les Eaux range by Chanel. That is a very kind of clear Lily of the Valley that gives you a very clear sense of what it actually smells of. Alessia Backstory says, Love Lelion, though, was never a big fan of Chanel perfumes. I now like number five as well. Oh, good that you... Embrace number five. Number five is just a masterpiece. Francis is, so Jesus says, Francis is posting hints on his Instagram stories. It seems like he's inspired by sporty colognes and chipras from the 60s and 70s. Oh, 
All right, then. Well, I mean, you got to start somewhere, right? I mean, I, I think, like, maybe he's not going to... We got to give him some time. I mean, he's just been appointed director. He can't just, like, immediately already say, okay, here, here's my masterpiece. Done. He needs that time to get to the masterpiece at Dior. I mean, wishing him the best of times at Dior and a long and prosperous career at Dior. But, like, you, you know, if you deliver your masterpiece on day one, then how are you going to grow from uh, from there, like, for the brand? Within the brand. Of course, he's already grown outside of the brand, but... Um, Raquel says, I'm highly interested in Chanel number 22 and Gardenia. They are to die for. Raquel, gorgeous perfumes. Page D says, I've always been amazed at how different a fragrance can smell in the, in the colder months versus warmer ones. Incredible, isn't it? How it changes. Letty says, I watched Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and for the scene where Brad Pitt drives down the hill on a sunrise, I sprayed pour monsieur. Now that perfume is etched in my soul. Oh, for sure. Especially if it's connected to visuals like that. Denise says, I love the smell of myrrh and tonka. Also enjoy Black Orchid. All-time favorite was Egoist. Rara says, Shepra's from the 60s and 70s. Maybe right up my alley. Might be, but Dior has not been playing with Shepra's from the 60s and 70s in a long while. I mean, the last kind of 60s Joji vibe we got... Sure, we got Diorissima, Diorella, Miss Dior, original version of it, and uh, Au Sauvage, the OG, not Sauvage. Uh, but uh, maybe a return to the Sheepers of the 70s is not a bad idea. It's just like, how is that going to play out on today's day and age? People don't really want to go for the bitter Sheepers nowadays. But let's see. Jesus says, the light, sporty, lily of the valley scents from the 70s, not the actual full-bodied Sheepers. Oh, gotcha. Well, you guys, that has been my top 10 perfumes for the year. <laughs> I want to say for the month of 2021. My top 10 perfumes for 2021. I hope you've enjoyed and I hope you've had a wonderful year despite all the odds. And here's hoping that 2022 is going to be better, brighter, healthier, more successful, more friendship, more love than ever. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye.